Hello, this is Chris Bennett. Join us weekly at POT TV on the Burning Shiva Hour as we explore the roots of cannabis culture throughout history and around the globe. On pottv.net, home of the herd. Hello, my name is Mark Emery. I'm the publisher of Cannabis Culture Magazine. I'm the proprietor of Pot Television. And I urge you, if you want to grow some fine marijuana, to check out emeryseeds.com or the Emery Seeds catalog in Cannabis Culture Magazine and grow yourself some fine marijuana. Hi, welcome to another edition of the Burning Shiva Hour. I'm your host, Chris Bennett. This is part four in our series on biblical hemp, Moses and the Burning Bush. For those who've been watching the series since its beginnings, they'll may notice that I'm making a jump from the Garden of Eden right over to Moses and skipping the patriarchs. This is because the series is on cannabis and not on intoxicants in general. So uh, I'm kind of focusing for time's sake merely on the cannabis references. But there are actually references to a number of uh, uh, incidents with intoxicants in, in between the time of Garden of Eden and Moses. Noah, in fact, gets so drunk that uh, he passes out and uh, one of his sons, Ham, enjoys his nakedness while he's passed out. And uh, some of the rabbis have seen that uh, more than a mere looking upon his father's nakedness is indicated in this passage. As well, the hero Lot, Abraham's nephew, he gets so drunk that uh, he sleeps with both his daughters. Uh, they have uh, two children uh, through this uh, uh, conuptial relationship with their father, Moab and Ben Ami, meaning son of my father and son of my kinsman. But then the Moabites and Ammonites were uh, people that surrounded the Israelites, and more likely the myth is just like a way of uh, desacralizing their neighbors' uh, um, names and whatnot. And as well in uh, um, the patriarchal tale of uh, uh, um, Jacob, and his wives, uh, Jacob gets so uh, drunk that he mistakes uh, Leah for, for Rachel uh, um, and uh, takes the wrong woman as his wife because he's so drunk he's made a deal with his father-in-law for, for, for uh, one of his daughters who's in fact his uncle, and these are his cousins that we're dealing with, and uh, he gets so drunk he mistakes one of them for the other and has to work another few years to earn the other wife. And uh, then amongst the wives, um, Reuben, his, I think of uh, Leah, gives uh, mandrakes to his Auntie Rachel. Mandrakes, are, of course, are a very, very, very powerful hallucinogen. So um, there's a number of, uh, of references to uh, intoxication and even the use of hallucinogens in uh, uh, um, the stories uh, in between uh, the Garden of Eden myth and the story of Moses. But there are no references to cannabis. And in many ways, I would say that the, the Jewish story really starts with Moses. Um, at the end of the patriarchs, you know, we, when we follow the story of Abraham, the father of the Jews, to Joseph in Egypt, um, we, we find that uh, the, the, the Jews end up in Egypt. And this is where Moses appears on the scene. He's, he's living in exile in Egypt. He's been raised and born in Egypt. The whole tale of, the, of the, 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 him being discovered in the reed basket in the Nile and whatnot. So um, this is true. This is interesting because Joseph, the last of the of the patriarchal line of, of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, he ends up in Egypt, and so it places the Jews there. Now, interestingly, um, this is where the Jewish concept of monotheism, the worship of one deity, may have been picked up. It may have been picked up in Egypt. Sigmund Freud wrote a book, Moses and Monotheism, and Freud suggested that Moses. Uh, um, was influenced deeply by the, by the philosophy of Akhenaten, the heretic pharaoh. Uh, most, of, uh, most of what we know about Akhenaten has been discovered in this last century because the uh, ancient Egyptians uh, despised this individual so much they destroyed his pyramid and tried to hide all remnants of, uh, of his, uh, his philosophy and, and trip. But uh, um, the ancient Egyptians, like all people, recycled in bits of his uh, 
old pyramids were rebuilt in other pyramids, and they've been able to put some stuff back together about Akhenaten. And apparently, he renovated uh, um, for some time the whole Egyptian cosmology. He took uh, um, the multi-pantheon of Osiris, Isis, Nuit, Hadid, all these Egyptian deities, and he said, no, there's only one god, Amun, the sun. And he had this religion of one god. Now, interestingly, in Akhenaten's uh, um, period, there were Semites that were in um, peri- uh, uh, roles of power, much like Joseph worked for Pharaoh. There were Semites in that exact position. Uh, um, so it shows that uh, the Jews were there and, and, and they, were, what, they were, were totally involved with it. Now, it was shortly after this period of time that the exile is said to have taken place. And uh, um, the Jews, according to some agent sources, were kicked out for pestilence, meaning they were spreading disease, gonorrhea, uh, and, and other things. And that's why they were forced to leave uh, um, um, Egypt. So they were chased out of Egypt, you know, varying on, on, on whether you take the biblical story or whether you want to take the, uh, the historian's account from people that were closer at the time for, 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 for whatever. But they were pushed out, and it is, it is in that that likely the multi-god-goddess pantheon that's indicated by the Garden of Eden myth, the myth of the flood, which is all taken from these earlier Sumerian deities, turned into the worship of one deity. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Moses and look at elements of shamanism in Moses' worship and uh, discuss how one deity from that earlier Canaanite Near Eastern pantheon became the one god of the Jews. So we're going to take a little break here, and then we're going to come back and we're going to move into Moses and the Burning Bush, Part 4 in our series on Biblical Hemp. Hello, I'm Mark Emery. I'm the director of POT Television. And I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing here on POT TV, the Internet Network. And what we would like to do is we'd like to get you on the air, actually. And we'd like you, if you're in New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, Europe, uh, Mexico, anywhere in the world, if you can put together a good half hour show summarizing what's going on in your community, what's going on in your country, then we are interested in broadcasting that on pot television. We're looking for correspondence and we will pay you $150 Canadian for a half hour show. And even if you just send in a two to five minute bit of your rally, of your conference, of seminar, of coffee shops in your area where marijuana is being sold, interviews with dealers, interviews with consumers, interviews with growers, from your community, and we use it on the air, then we will pay you $50. And we are looking for a wide variety of submissions. So if you have something you'd like to see on pot television, and you have a video camera in your possession, then get out there and become a journalist working for Pot TV, the Pot Television Network. And contact us at a variety of places, info at pot-tv.net, or call us here at 604 886 one four eight nine and we look forward to receiving your submission for a broadcast here on pot tv